his foot got caught and the artificial surface twisted that knee and he looks like he's in pain. Warming up on the sidelines, Tommy Fraser, who has not thrown a pass in the Canadian Football League yet. That's the bone, it's, it's above the ankle and below the knee. It's that bone between the ankle and the knee. And six to eight weeks is certainly an early diagnosis, but a possible diagnosis. Assassin has his tight end Mitchell. Dear Lord, the battles go through life. Dear Lord, the battles go through life. We ask for chances fair. We ask for chances fair. Chance equal our stripes. Chance equal our stripes. Chance to do it there. Chance to do it there. We should win. We should win. Let it be by the code. Let it be by the code. Faith and honor hell high. Faith and honor hell high. We should lose. We should lose. Stand by the road. Stand by the road. Cheers, the winners go by. Cheers, the winners go by. Day by day. Day by day. We get better and better. We get better and better. 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 better.
Then he gets up and comes across the field. See, yeah, that's what you do. You go like you're going to get, you're going to block, and then you go down in the ground. You see, then you roll around, and then they don't see you. And then you get up, and they say, where'd that guy come from? He was on the ground. That's what Clyde Simmons, in fact, that's how you react after the guy cuts you and rolls on the ground and gets up and scores a touchdown. Until he started to relax, then Hasty arrived. Boomer back to throw. Mitchell taken down by Byron Evans. Thanks, Leslie. That's official then. A broken fibula. Yeah, and the fibula is a bone. It's it's above the ankle and below the knee. It's that bone between the ankle and the knee. And six to eight weeks is certainly an early diagnosis, but a possible diagnosis. As Sison has his tight end Mitchell. And Mitchell cuts away from two tacklers. Mitchell's still on his feet. He's going to score. His third of the day. 65 yards to Siason to Mitchell. Big day for tight ends. Watch the, the fake here that Boomer Esiason makes. Boomer Esiason's one of the, the best ball handlers in football. Now watch the fake he makes there. And then he puts the ball down here. See, he fakes the run high. Now he wants to hold all these guys so that his tight end can get deep. Then he comes out of the fake, and he finds Johnny Mitchell up the sideline. Then after Mitchell makes that catch, gets open, he makes a heck of a run across the grain for the touchdown. The extra point by Blanchard is good. And it's 28 to 14. As size and watch him hide it. No one hides it better. And then he looks up and look what he finds. He finds a wide open Johnny Mitchell. And then look what Johnny Mitchell does after he's found wide open. That's some poor tackling and some good running by Mitchell. 28-14. Start, you know, thinking of having to have surgeries and pins and stuff, uh, and being a quarterback and what a quarterback has to take in this game. You just hope that you know that everything goes well, and I don't think right now you worry about the end of the season. That was a good little dance by Mitchell, deflected by Clyde Simmons, who almost came up with an interception. I mean, everything has been under control since he's gotten in there. Second and one. 5.15 left on the game clock. Pass caught by Mitchell. He is hammered backwards but got the first down. That's a good catch. Because Byron Evans was right there. You know, you wonder you wonder if you should throw that one because you know Byron Evans was that close to the hit, so that means he was that close to knocking the ball down or making an interception. Too. Then you can take a term of five or six yards. If you're not going to go for it, then you have to throw the ball ten yards. The size and out of the pocket again. As a man coming up cross incomplete. Intended for the tight end. Johnny Mitchell. I think to win this game, I think you have to punt here. But if I were in this situation, because I know they don't have any timeout, that's but, the key. But you do get a timeout at the change of possession. That would give you one. You do get a timeout at the two-minute warning. But they're not going to punt. No, but I think they should. I mean, even though even though you don't have any, with 234, you really, in essence, have two timeouts. They're going to go on fourth and ten their own 20. Lock stopped at 234. They're stopping at the two-minute warning. Here's the size. Up the middle of Mitchell. And he's loose. Mitchell broke one tackle. Almost broke it all the way. Taken down by Eric Allen. Wes Hopkins made the stop. They knew what they were doing. I mean, the tight end has been the thing all day. They look again. Johnny Mitchell.
occasion. Right now, the Alouettes have three on the board in the second half. Tracy Han goes to work with a first down and great field position. Can't find anyone open and one hopped it for Michael Souls. I tell you, Han is down. And he's on his knee. look on the head oh, coach's yeah. face. Well, you know that Bob Price is concerned, no question. I mean, this is his guy. This is the guy who's last year's MVP for Baltimore in the Grey Cup game, and they can ill afford to lose him. I mean, see the job he does to get some outside, get him, get to the outside, and then Sam Harrison Ooh. brings him down, and you saw right there his right knee just gets twisted as he goes to the turf. Looks like his foot got caught. And the artificial surface twisted that knee, and he looks like he's in pain. Warming up on the sidelines, Tommy Fraser, who has not thrown a pass in the Canadian Football League yet. Timeout while they attend to Tracy. Ottawa on top, 17 to 3 on CFL Live from Ottawa. Right now, and that's devastating news for Montreal. And we'll get a look at Tommy Fraser. Playing his first down. The Canadian Football League had a pretty good week of practice, according to the coach. Throwing on the run here. And his first CFL pass. Oh, thought it might have been intercepted. Not down. It Frank West. Yeah, it should have been. It should have been intercepted. Yeah, Frank, Frank West and Joe Merrill were both trying to outbid each other. I mean, they were, they were having negotiations there while the ball was flying through the air as to who was going to pick up that interception. They couldn't come to an agreement, and the ball hit the ground. I mean, they were both sitting there waiting for it like it was a punt return. I mean, here comes the pass from Tommy Fraser. He gets nailed after he throws it, and look at this. Eight and five They should there. have shared that yeah. rather than being greedy. 28 <laughs> to go till full time second and nine. Montreal. Fraser's first pass was incomplete. His second one goes to the end zone. Incomplete. Chris Armstrong. Well, didn't miss it by much, actually. Kind of get the, it looked the, cool in there, didn't well, I was going to say, but you kind of get the feeling that Tommy Fraser is real comfortable with the offensive schemes and the reads because he's basically taking the ball, dropping back. Look at the receivers. There's Armstrong. He's not sure where he's going to throw it. He comes into the middle. He turns around, goes back one way, comes back, almost runs under that football. But, I mean, Tommy Fraser was basically just playing Sandlot. Give me the ball. Let me run around a little bit, try and find an open guy, and just throw it to him. Three and the uh, rest of the numbers there to the Ottawa Rough Riders a call. And I tell you, they average 28,000 fans for the rest of the home season. You can pretty much guarantee that the corporate world is going to jump on board if they see the interest from the fans there, too. Fraser just shoveled it. Shoveled it ahead. So it'll be second down and a yard to go. 6.39 to go, fourth quarter. Ottawa hanging on to an 11-point lead. First completion for Fraser to Norman Bradford. He made it to the 50, and I'm not sure he's got the first down. Where are they going to spot it? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, he's going to be just over the yeah. first down marker. This is what you do for the young quarterback, Tommy Fraser. I mean, Bob Price knows he doesn't have a lot of experience about reading the defense, so he's just going to give him the odd and the ball off to Norman Bradford and Mike Pringle on first down and on second down. Let's keep it short and simple. We'll dump the ball to Norman Bradford or Mike Pringle. 17 to 6. Montreal with another first down, this time at the Riders 49. Fraser to his right, throwing on the run. And Kleine couldn't bring it in. Montreal lives on second and 10. Fraser trying to buy a little time. Climbing. We'll have the first down coming back. And stepping out near the 35. Well, this is what Tommy Fraser does. And this is why he, this is why he, that Bob Price thinks he has such great potential in the league, his ability to run and to throw on the run. You see big Jeff Cummins trying to run him down, but he's got tremendous speed and size and strength to the outside. And Look at him gun that ball while he's running full speed. Pretty nice throw. 14 yards the game, setting Montreal up with a first down at the Ottawa 35. Getting a little more tense now, folks. Ottawa on top, 17 to 6. Montreal on the move. 
in the fourth quarter in particular. Here's the heat. That's what you do. Little tip. Look at the intensity in those eyes. Second and ten. Long toss. Picked off. Ken Wilhite. He's had an outstanding ball game. Great interception. And a nice return forming here for Wilhite. Finally surrenders. He's been running all night long. He stole his one in the end zone. Joey Young was the intended receiver. Looked like it had six written all over it. Stands in coolly. Armstrong had a tip go on the Pat Delaney Knight has played a way on the ball considering he had no idea that ball was right there at that time. Maybe a little lucky. Maybe an eight. That would be left to be good sometimes. Montreal one for three on third down. Gambles here is another one. His soul swinging out of the backfield. Right. You got to see Johnny Mitchell's best game in his career in the National Football League. For those that remember Johnny Mitchell, played for Nebraska for a couple seasons in the early 90s, 90 and 91. 
Uh, his quarterbacks then were Mickey Joseph and Keith and Kant. I think Mike Grant got in there as well. Johnny was drafted in the first round, 15th pick overall, the 92 NFL draft. He is currently 51 years old. Um, I wouldn't say that his career was a Hall of Fame career, but uh, he did have some pretty good games. This is his game log. Uh, his rookie year, his best game was 78 yards against the Dolphins where they won. He had a pretty good uh, second year, sophomore season, if you will, in the NFL. And there's the game against the Eagles where he had seven catches, 146 yards. And his next best game was against the Bills where they had six for 78. Uh, the Jets that year finished 8-8 eight and eight, but lost their last – Four of their last five, they they were playing pretty good. He didn't – Johnny missed a couple games. Not sure if it was due to injury or, or for other unknown reasons. And in his third season, he had another 100-yard game against the Minnesota Vikings. Earned 20 yards. Nice game against the Dolphins, five for 81. A couple touchdowns. And his fourth season with the Jets – had another 100-yard game against the New England Patriots. Nine catches for 108 yards. Followed up against the Oilers, seven for 72. And then had one catch with the Dallas Cowboys in 1996. That was his final catch of his career on December 22, 1996. Um, he did suit up for the New Orleans Saints that looked it's like, but did not play in either game in nineteen in two thousand and one. And they crewed no statistics, and that was late in the season that year. It looks like week sixteen and seventeen. Now the Eagles game against the Jets, where they blew a twenty one nothing lead and a twenty eight fourteen lead. Um, Randall Cunningham got hurt in the first half and was replaced by Bubby Bis Brister for the Eagles, and they managed to come back. It was 30-28 to 28 late um, when Brister was intentionally grounded the ball in the end zone, but Eric Gallen intercepted a, a boomer of size and pass and went 94 yards, four touchdowns, and that was the game winner. Um, 61, game, 61 degrees on that day. Over under was 40 and a half. It, su it succeeded that one, and the Jets were favored by a point. That was Sunday, October 3rd, 1993 at Giants Stadium. So it was a pretty good game. I watched the entire thing and just pulled the highlights from, from Mitchell because I was always a big fan. But overall, his career wasn't bad. I don't know if you'd call it a bust. It wasn't as much as we thought he would be, but – Certainly put up some big numbers against the Eagles in this particular game. Well, that's with the Tommy Frazier highlights in Canada. I know there was not much to show. Uh, this was his – I mean, it says that they he played three games for Montreal that year. This is the only one I could find, and he accrued all the stats in this particular game. As you know, Tommy Frazier, his professional career ended because of blood clots. Um, so we really never got to see what he possibly could do. I wouldn't take this game and say he was terrible. I mean, I thought he looked nervous, but, you know, who knows what he could have done with his career. It's a shame that, we, that, you know, that was the last time he stepped on the field. You know, it was 6 for 17 for 55 yards, and an interception would happen to be by uh, uh, Kenny Wilhite, who's – Currently on the Husker staff, and it was a defensive back for the Corn Huskers back then, so a former teammate did it to him. As you know, Tommy Frazier went to Manatee High School in Bradenton, Florida, had a fantastic, phenomenal college football career, 33-3 and as a starter, most valued player in three consecutive national championship games. Uh, could have had a three-peat. Arguably, he's – one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time, if not the greatest option quarterback. But there you have it. That's his last appearance that he made as on, a, on the football field.